Okay, folks, why don't you click them closed and let's have a little look up here. We're going to finish talking about these imaginary numbers. Well, not finish, finish for today. So uh, here's where we left off. We're going to take a look at powers of I. Now, what did we say I was equal to? How, what did we define the imaginary unit I as being? It's, well, it involves a square root. Square root of negative one. There you go. Okay. So I is defined as the square root of negative one. So then what did we say about I squared? What is I squared equal to? What do you think? You know what Jack knows? You know what page this is? 12. 12. Thank you. Yep, you betcha. So what would I squared be equal to then? Negative one, yeah. Okay. And if I square a square root, I just undo the square root. So that's a little strange. So we know, we know a couple things. We know that i to the 1 is equal to the square root of negative 1, which is just i, right? i squared is the square root of negative 1 squared, which is negative 1. Okay, what about i cubed? All I need, I, I, if I know what i is and I know what i squared is, I can figure out what i cubed is. Because if we think about our, our properties of exponents, i cubed, isn't that the same? If I, what happens if I multiply like bases with exponents? Like if I were to do something like, for example, if I were to try to do uh, a to the m times a to the n. I've got the same base, a, taken to different powers. What do I do to the exponents? You add them. Good. It's a to the m plus n. So then i cubed, how could I break up i cubed then? I could break up i cubed into what? I could break it up into an i squared times an i to the 1. Everybody agree? Okay. So if I do that, then aren't I just getting i squared is negative 1 times i, I just get negative i, right? Okay, everybody give me thumbs so far. How are we doing? Okay. How are we doing over here? Thumbs? Good? Okay. All right, what about i to the fourth? How could I figure out, how could I determine what the value of i to the fourth is? If I know all this other stuff I've just determined. Yeah, good. Or I squared squared even, right? Okay. So I squared squared. I squared is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. Everybody agree? Okay, now from here on out, it gets really easy. Really easy. What's I, I to the fourth? What's I to the fifth going to be? Okay, and, and take for granted that you already know the first four powers of i. Could you even do it easier? i to the fifth, that would work. You could do, I mean, couldn't you also do something like, you could even do like i to the fourth times i to the one. Everybody agree? Multiplying by i to the fourth I to the fourth is just one, right? So what's that going to give us? If I write that as I to the fourth times I to the first, well, I to the fourth is just one, so it's I. I get back I. Okay, I can do the same trick for I to the sixth, couldn't I? Isn't I to the sixth just I to the fourth times I squared? And so I'm going to get back the same thing as I squared, which is negative one, right? I to the seventh, same trick. Just make it i to the fourth times i cubed. So I'm going to get the same answer as i cubed. Right? And i to the eighth, I could just do i to the fourth uh, squared, right? i to the fourth times i to the fourth. And so I'm just getting back one again. So what's going to happen here? If I were to go up to i to the ninth, what's going to happen? I'm just going to repeat that same pattern, aren't I? 
the, the powers of I, I'm just going to get this cycle of four. It's just going to go over and over and over again, right? And so I can use that to calculate really big, value, really big values of I. I could even be trickier, and Jack was on to something earlier. If I squared is negative one, we can always, like if I take really big power, sometimes it's easier than, than remembering all four of these. What if I just focus on the first two? Really, if I know the first two, I can figure out the value of any power of I, right? Because for example, I to the 15th, how could I write that in terms of powers of I squared and I to the first? Would you agree that 15 is odd, right? I to the 15 is the same as I to the 14 times I to the one. Why did I do that? Well, I to the 14, whoops, I to the 14 is the same as I squared to the seventh, right? If we always break up any power of I into an even power times an extra one, if necessary, any even power of I, I can think of as being I squared to some power, right? Because think about our property of exponents for this. We have a, for, for this kind of a situation, I have a property of exponents that says A to the M to the N equals A to the M times N, right? Didn't we say that if you, mul if you take a power to a power, you multiply the exponents, right? So then I squared is negative one Negative one to an odd power. What is that? What's negative one to an even power? What is it? No, negative one to just plain old negative one quantity to an even power. What's negative one squared? One. What's negative one to the fourth? One. Negative one to the sixth? One. How come? Because if I have... If, if, if I have negative one taken to some even power, what does it mean to take something to a power? It just means I'm gonna multiply it by itself that many times, right? Well, if I have an even power of I, then I could always break up all those I's that are being multiplied together into groups of two, and each group of two is gonna equal one. I just get one times one times one. I just get one, don't I? Okay, uh, but if I have negative one to uh, sorry, if I have negative one to an odd power, negative one to an odd power means that I'm going to break them up into pairs of two. I'm going to have one left over, one odd ball left over, right? So I, I know always that negative one to any odd power is always negative one, okay? So then in this case, I've got I squared to the seventh times I. So I squared to the seventh that's going to give me negative one to an odd power, so I'm getting negative one times that extra i that I had left over gives me negative i. Okay, everybody got that? Okay, we'll, we'll practice a couple of these too. Negative i, yep, negative i. Okay, how about I to the 62? How am I going to do that one? What do you think, Elijah? Uh, I, uh, I 31 times 2. Okay, good. It, well, it's I squared to the 31. Very good. It's I squared to the 31. I squared is negative 1, right? So essentially what I've got is negative one to an odd power. So what's the answer? No, no I've just got negative one to the 31 this time. Negative one. There's no way. See, the other case, I had negative one to an odd power times I, right? Because I started off with an odd power of I, okay? This time it was an, originally an even power of I. So I only have negative one to an odd power. And so you're correct, Jack. My answer is negative one. Okay, so let's everybody break off to the boards here and let's try a couple of these just for practice. Okay, these powers of I. So I'm going to give you a power of I and you're going to tell me what it is.
Okay, I, I see. I see. We're kind of getting off on a on a on the wrong foot here in a couple of these cases. So let's everybody take a look up here for a second. So the first thing I want to do here, let, let's compare this to another problem. We'll look at two of these at the same time. So I've got i to the ninety nine, and over here I'm going to do i to the forty eight. Okay, if I have an odd power of i, then I've got to write it as an even power of i times i to the 1, right? So my first step is going to be this. I'm going to write this as i to the 98 times i to the 1, right? Okay? I don't have to do that over here. In this case, I've got an even power of i, so I don't have to do that. Now I've got to take this i to the 98, and I've got to write that as i squared to some power. Yes, sir? 49. 49, good, okay. So I get i squared to the 49. Well, what's i squared? Uh, negative, one. negative 1. So I get negative 1 to an odd power times i. Well, what's negative 1 to an odd power? Negative 1. So I get negative 1 times i is negative i. Okay, how about over here? Well, I don't, I don't have to, I've already got an even power of i, so I can write that even power of i as i squared to what power? 24. Okay, i squared is what? Negative 1. Okay, so negative 1 to an even power is? One, we're done. Okay, let's try another one. Okay, try this one. Try i to the, let's see, I want to do i to the 81. i to the 81, try that one. Go, Drew. There you go. Jack, there you go. Uh huh. Paige, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Good. Good. How'd you get the negative one there, Paige? How'd... Okay, so if I have i to the 81, that's the same as i to the 80, right? Right? Times i, there you go, yeah. Yeah, first step, we always wanna make it, if it's not an even power of i, we gotta break it into an even power of i times i, okay? All right, so, okay, now what can do with the i to the 80? To, to what power? To the, to, you say 40? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yep, exactly. There you go. You got it. Yeah, times i. So then what's negative 1 to an even power is? Uh, no, to, negative 1 to an even power is? Use the principle, use a real simple example. What's negative 1 squared? There you go, 1, right? Yeah. Yeah, so what's your answer? I, that's it, yep. Okay, let's see what we got. Good, good. And you understand all the steps in the middle? Drew, okay. Okay, so, no, that's good. So you got I squared to the 40, right? Well, I squared is just negative one. So you can probably just jump right from here down to the step where you say negative one to the 40, right? You want to put it in parentheses, though. right, times i. So if I have negative one to an even power, what is that? Think of a simple example. What's negative one 
to the power of two. What's negative one squared? Just one, isn't it? Yeah, negative one to an even power is one. So I get one times i is i. Okay. Elijah, did you, did you get i? Yeah, I got it. Okay, good, good. All right, so how do you think you guys, you think we got it? Want to do one more? Yeah. One more? Okay. So real quick, how can we do this? This, this is the same thing as saying i to the 80 times i I to the 80 is the same as I squared to the 40. And I squared is negative 1, right? Well, this is just 1 times I equals I, okay? All right, let's try how about I to the 10? That's an easier one. The even ones are a lot easier, aren't they? I don't know about a lot easier, but they're easier. Mm, no, i to the fifth times i squared is i to the seventh. I'm going to let you think about that a little bit more. So, right, that's true, but i to the fifth isn't something we know. Right, we want to try to write that in terms of, remember, the only ones we need to know for this, oh, I, I'm on the other page, the only two powers of i we need to know to simplify any power of i is that i to the one equals i, duh. I squared equals negative one. So we got to write it in terms of I squared. I squared to what power? No, no. If I take a power to a power, it's I squared to the fifth, right? Because if I take, but it's I squared to the fifth. Because if I take a power to a power, like think about this. If I have X squared cubed, so let me steal that for just a sec. So if I've got, x squared cubed, that's x to the sixth, right? Yeah. Oh, there, you, exactly, yeah. So it's i squared to the fifth. And you could even skip the i squared part if you want to and just call it negative one to the fifth because you know i squared is negative one, okay? Good, good. Uh, let's see, negative, oh, but there's no i there this time because i to the tenth Tenth is just five is just five times two, right? So it's just i squared to the fifth. You don't have an extra one because that's even. See what I'm saying? Okay. So you just get negative one. You don't have that i in there, right? Okay. Uh, so we got negative one. Try one more. One more for me. And then we'll we'll call our quits. Uh, let's do i to the two hundred and three. Good. Now see if you can just write that, Jack. See if you can just write that. You just skip the I squared step. Because you know it's I squared to some power, right? Yeah. But what's I squared equal to? Negative one. So just go right to that step. There you go. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yes. Times I, right? Yep. But if I have negative one to an odd power, what's that equal to? You think of the simplest odd power, which is one. Negative one to the one is just negative one, isn't it? So negative one to an odd power is negative one. Negative one to an even power is positive one. Well, but you don't forget your i there, right? You've got your, you have, you, this is correct. i to the 203 is i to the 202 times i to the one, right? So you rewrote i to the 202 like that, but you still have to multiply that by i. There you go. And negative one to an odd power is negative times i. So it's just negative i. Okay. There you go. Good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Okay, grab a seat. You got it. I'm convinced you got it. That's good stuff.
Okay. Okay, so let's look at some simple products then of imaginary numbers. Okay, now I want you to, th th there's a good trick here. All you have to do is you just, you just think about I like an X when you're doing the arithmetic, and then you, we, we already know how to simplify powers of I, right? So let's take number 16. I've got negative 4I times 2I times negative 9I, right? So I've got to multiply these things. I, I, I really could do this two ways. And you guys can kind of take your pick on this. I've got to multiply these three numbers in pairs. I always multiply in pairs, don't I? So what is negative 4i times positive 2i? So it's negative 8i squared, right? Because that's like, what, imagine those i's are x's. Right, I would have negative 4x times 2x would give me negative 8x squared, agreed? Okay, so this is becoming then, this part right here becomes negative 8i squared, right? But what is i squared equal to? Negative 1. So whenever I see an i squared, when I'm multiplying imaginary numbers together and I get an I squared, what could I just do to that product? What could I do to that negative eight when I multiply it? Yeah, just multiply it by negative one, which just changes it to a positive, doesn't it? So this whole negative right here, just, whoops. The negative, the I squared just makes that a positive. And then I cancel the I squared out, right? Everybody get that? So now I've just got eight, positive eight, times negative 9i. Well, what's 8 times negative 9i? Negative 72i, because I treat the i like an x, right? 8 times negative 9x would just be negative 72x, right? Okay. So our final answer just looks like negative 72i. Good? Okay, give me thumbs on that. Okay, okay. All right, let's take a quick look at this guy down here. What if I did this one? What if I did I, the quantity I times the square root of three squared times the quantity negative eight I squared? Okay, well, if I'm squaring this whole thing, think what that means. It means I'm multiplying it by itself, right? There, there's, a, there's another way we could look at this is there's a property of exponents. See if you can tell me how to do this. If I have A times B, to the n, what's that equal to? Well, no, not quite. What can I do with that exponent? Times b to the power of n, right? And how come? Because really, a times b to the n is just a times b times a times b times a times, right? to the n. So I could collect all the a's together and multiply all the a's out and get a to the n first and then multiply the b second and get b to the n, right? Okay, so what about here then? Well, this is the same thing as saying, this is the same, well, oh, come on here, there we go. This is the same thing Oh boy, these are things, oh, there we go, okay. This is the same thing as saying Square root of 3 squared times i squared, right? Well, the square root of 3 squared is just 3, isn't it? i squared is negative 1. Agreed? Times negative 8i quantity squared is like saying negative 8 squared times i squared. Well, negative 8 squared is 64, and i squared is negative 1. Right? And now what do we got? Well, I've, I've got to multiply these four numbers together in any order. Well, let's multiply the negative 1 times the negative 1 and just get 1 times 3 times 64 is just 192. See how that works? Okay. 
Uh, what about number 20? Okay, what about number 20? A couple ways we could do this, right? I could, without even thinking about, without converting those into, into imaginary numbers at the beginning, if I wanted to, I could just make that the square root of one big number, for one thing, right? I could say that's going to become, one way I could do this is to say that's going to become the square root of 24 times 3 times 2, okay? Well, that would be 3 times 24 is 72 times 2 is 144, right? And I've got a negative times a negative times a negative. That's going to give me a negative, isn't it? Anytime I multiply an odd number of negative numbers together, I'm going to get a negative result. So I get the square root of negative 144, and what's that? Uh, hold on. What do I do? No, you're, you're on the right track. You got a 12. But if I take a square root, if I've got a negative inside the square root, what is that automatically becoming outside? I. So the negative part becomes an I, and the square root of 144 is 12. Right? So there's one way I could do it. Okay? Another way I could do it is I could just take each of these separately and turn and, and create an I in each of those three square roots. In this particular case, that was actually easier, you're going to see, but not always. Sometimes this, this way will be just as easy. So I could turn that into a square root of 24 times I, right? And if I do a quick factor tree on 24, how do I want to break down 24 if I'm going to do couples go out, singles stay in? What do you think? Okay, how'd you get that, Jack? You, I think you did that really, really well. I, th I think I heard, I, I know what you were thinking, I believe. Six times four, right? When we broke it up into a factor tree, Jack picked a four and a six. Why is the four a good choice? It's a perfect square, right? In fact, we know it's the biggest perfect square that divides into 24. So as we move on and we do this more and more, we can start to get better and better at couples go out, singles stay in. So it's actually a good idea. Now, as you're getting a little practice at this, it's a good idea to try to do the, if I can break it into a perfect square and a non-perfect square, try to do the perfect square first because you can see that the four is giving me a couple of twos, right? And the six is gonna break into a two and a three, but those are both singles, agreed? I don't even have to write those down. I know I'm not gonna get any couples out of the six, so just leave the six inside. And then look what you get. This is telling you that it's equal to two times square root of six. Give me thumbs on that. Feel like you're getting better and better at this, okay? You don't have to see these tricks, but it's helpful. So then this is just going to become 2 times the square root of 6 times i, right, times, well, square root of negative 3 is just square root of 3 times i, isn't it? Times square root of negative 2 is just going to be square root of positive 2 times i, right? And now what? So now we've got, I've got 2 times the square root of 6 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 2, right? So let's just look at the green parts for a second. So that's going to become 2 times the square root of 6 times the square root of 3 times the square root of 2 is just the square root of 36, isn't it? Right? Because 2 times 3 is 6 times 6 is 36 times i times i times i times i cubed. What's i cubed? Negative i, right? Because it's i squared times i. Okay, so what's that give me then? Square root of 6 is, is 6, right? Or square root of 36 is 6, right? 2 times 6 is 12, and I've got a negative out front from that negative sign right there, and an i at the end. Either way, I get negative 12i. Okay, everybody see that? 
Okay. All right. Okay, so now we, we're going to leave the math for a second. We're going, to, we're going to look at just some more kind of math theory, some vocabulary, right? We've got, we got to define some terms here. Okay, so it turns out that we've been dealing with imaginary numbers, but imaginary numbers are just examples of what we call complex numbers. Complex numbers are always written in this form. They're written in the form A plus B times I. Okay, where A is what we call the real part, and B is what we call the imaginary part. Okay? Okay, so first of all, let's just practice this a little bit, and then we'll put this into some context. We'll kind of try to relate this to the number sets we talked about before for real numbers. So let's take the number 3 plus 7i. That's a complex number in standard form. It's written as a real part plus an imaginary part times i. So what is the real part for that complex number? Three. It's just three. Okay. What's the imaginary part? Seven. It's seven because that's the coefficient of i. 